Let's get some analysis now with Alexei Muraviov. He's an associate professor of national security and strategic studies at Curtin University in Perth, Australia. Thanks very much for being with us. So as we've been reporting, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that uh, Vladimir Putin will win uh, another term as president. Um, how do you see uh, Mosk uh, Russia's future once this election uh, is over? Well, I think the key, uh, the, I mean, I think we can determine this after the United States would conclude its election term, and that would predetermine who is going to talk to Vladimir Putin uh, once uh, the decision about who is going to sit in the in the Oval Office in the White House will be, will be uh, decided, because one way or another, the two key players in the current uh, geopolitical standoff that affects the rest of the world, United States and Russia, will have to come to terms and start communicating. And that can only occur once the election cycle uh, of this year will will complete. So that that would obviously shape up what will happen with Russia vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. The Russians, obviously, under, under Putin, and it's more likely to be obviously Putin, will continue to pursue their strategic engagement, which what I would describe the global south. And I think that's where Russia's uh, current um, external priorities are. Domestically, Putin will have to address the issue of demographic shortage, and that's been very clear in his annual address to the Federal Assembly. He will continue to invest money in some key ambitious projects, including infrastructure upgrades, transportation network upgrades, what he was promising um, uh, for, for some time. And obviously, the Russians will be asking him questions when he can deliver much promised victory in Ukraine, because in, in only in recent days, the Ukrainians increased their attacks on Russia by means of drones, by means of cross-border insurgency. So I think he will have to respond to that uh, sooner than later. Is the tide, tide turning in Russia's favor with regard to the war in Ukraine? And, what, and if that's the case, what implications does that have then uh, for for uh, Russia and, and ordinary Russians? Well, it, it, it seems this way that the tide is turning towards Russia. They control the strategic initiative. They continue to advance along, along the vast front line, even though this advance is pretty slow. Ukraine does deliver occasional successes, either by sinking Russian uh, ships in the, in the Black Sea or by striking targets inside Russia. But it doesn't ch seem to change the problem of not not uh, re regaining confidence by by defending its territory on on the battlefield. However, the Russians also want to see this war not being drawn forever. Rather than they want to see victory, victory that promised Putin promised them uh, right right at the start. So I think we will see a continuation of that. The big question is how NATO is going to respond to it. If Russia will continue its advance, if Russia will threaten to take um, Ukrainian strategic targets, such maybe uh, the, the city of Odessa or Kharkiv, whether that may uh, compel NATO to, to deploy its forces. And then the question would arise how Russia will respond. Putin was trying to answer that, but it's still a bit of a gray zone. So I think once we'll get out of this gray zone uncertainty, we'll have better, cl better clarity and better idea on when this war will come to an end and how far Russia would be able to continue with its current advance. All right, Alexei Muraviov, uh, thanks very much for being with us.